So literally just yesterday, I found out that you can take a 5700 XT BIOS and flash that onto a 5700, which is pretty freaking cool because that's actually something that I just happened to have today. So I've taken out the Titan X out of my gaming computer and inside of there is a 5700 from Sapphire. And I just got this graphics card and it's actually supposed to be used for my wife's gaming laptop. Uh, so that way when she plays games, she has a much better gaming experience. And it's been perfect so far, but I'm actually curious to see if we can brick it. I mean, not brick it. Curious if we can see if we can increase the performance and uh, maybe deliver her a better overall gaming experience, which has been pretty good because she plays at 1080p. So I don't really expect to, there to be much of a change. So um, I've already ran some benchmarks at 3440 by 1440 as well as 4K. Uh, with time strike and if you have already been aware of this which apparently it's been a thing for months then you're probably already tracking a lot of the performance gains you could get um, and that may not be news to you either all right so basically what i'm doing is i'm on tech power ups uh, website and i'm looking for uh, this specific vendor which is sapphire and we're going to download the latest bios uh, that is available to the Sapphire 5700 XT. Uh, so it looks like what's important here is that they have Nitro Special Edition, Nitro Pulse, and all these other different types of cards. And I'm pretty sure the, the Radeon that we bought used is just a Sapphire, it's not a Pulse. Um, so we're gonna try that BIOS and we're gonna download that now save and then the other thing we also did was download the flash tool that tech power up is provided uh, from their website so we're going to go ahead and unzip that and now that we have it unzipped we're just going to run this um oh, this application so it looks like i actually need to run this in administrative mode and so this is totally off the script. I haven't done this before, although I have watched some videos on it, so I kind of know what to do. Uh, well, at least I hope I kind of know what to do. And um, it should be pretty straightforward. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. So that way we can save our uh, 5700's BIOS. That way we don't lose it just in case we brick her graphics card. And we're just gonna name it uh, 5700 uh, BIOS.ROM. And we're going to save that into, I don't know, our documents directory. ROM saved. Continue. And then now we're going to load what we just downloaded also from Tech Power Up's website, which is the Sapphire 5700 XT ROM. So we're going to open that beast up. And I guess we click this program button and let it do its thing. Okay, well, that's done. Supposedly that worked. We're definitely gonna reboot the system um, just so that drivers or whatever the BIOS changes definitely take. And that way when we're on benchmarks, hopefully nothing's negatively affected. All right, so we're just booting back up and it looks like my resolution's uh, messed up and it fixed itself. So that that's a good sign, I think. I think that means the drivers are reinstalling. I just heard Windows beep or do its little, hey, I, I did something. Now, if you guys are like really curious about benchmarks, I mean, there are a ton of other YouTubers out there have like benchmarked this stuff to death. So I'm just gonna do a couple of benchmarks, literally, um, just to make sure that, you know, it's stable enough and works. So we're gonna run two 3D Mark benchmarks. We're gonna do the uh, Firestrike Ultra 4K. And the only thing that we're gonna do here is not run the demo because that takes forever. And I don't really want to spend a lot of time on this, to be honest. Uh, so here we go. So literally no changes except uh, turning the demo off and we're gonna run this and then Time Spy Extreme as well, the DirectX 12 one, and then see what the differences are. So I figured I would show a little bit of us recording the game, or uh, I'm sorry, the benchmark. Uh, and then last time I think when I ran this, I was seeing about 25 to 30 frames as well with uh, some lows to about the 19 or 18. So right now I'm not seeing too much of a difference between the 5700 XT BIOS and uh, the 5700 BIOS, but nonetheless, you know, uh, it's still pretty good for a 4K benchmark for a card that really probably shouldn't be playing 4K at all. So one cool thing here uh, that you guys 
can't see because this is probably all white, uh, which is all right, is that the 5700 is now showing up as a 5700 XT, which is pretty funny actually. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure and grab a screen grab of this and uh, I can show you guys um, the difference. So let's just, or maybe not the difference, but yeah, yeah, the difference between the uh, initial ones and before. Uh, wow, this is still a bit warm from, uh, from testing. We're just gonna put that down. So anyway, one of the things I want to uh, also do, or at least take a quick look at, is the middle score and the uh, OpenGL score on my MacBook. Now, um, I could use this graphics card, and I have used this graphics card, the 5700, uh, a couple of times when doing some rendering uh, for making these videos, but honestly, um, it is nice and does make a difference. It is, I would say it is noticeable, a noticeable difference. Um, but where it really would count most is during exports. And one of the problems is, is that if you actually want to use an eGPU during an export, you have to use one of the, uh, ProRes, uh, options for rendering, uh, which isn't a big deal. But the problem with that is, is that it creates files that are very, very, very large in size. So for instance, a five minute video can be about somewhere in the neighborhood, about 30 gigabytes in file size or more. And that's 4K 60 FPS, by the way. So filming something like this would be a very large file. And that's not a problem, uh, at least for the Mac, because I have plenty of storage. Where the problem comes is, is YouTube. So you actually are limited on how much, um, how big your files can be when uploading videos to YouTube. And that's, kind of where the problem is. Now the limit has increased. I don't remember when, but it used to only be 200, I'm sorry, it used to be only be like maybe 20 gigabytes, I believe. And now it's up to 128 gigabytes, which is actually really good. So that means I could actually use this from time to time when making smaller videos that are around the 10 minute, 10 to 15 minute mark. But you know, sometimes I upload videos that are like 30 minutes or more, and there is no way I'm gonna do any kind of ProRes export that is under 100 gigabytes uh, to upload to YouTube. And so then you might say, oh, well then just export in ProRes and then, you know, use H.264, H.265 encoding to bring the file size down. But honestly, while that would increase the export speed on the MacBook, it would actually, um, take more time because then I would have to, you know, use a secondary job, uh, and either export that off the Mac or onto the server where the server has a lot more power and can do, uh, H.264 or, or H.265 encoding. And then I would have to upload that to YouTube. So that, that would take a lot of time to do. Um, and it's just not really worth it, if that makes sense, because there's so many new steps in there. Uh, but for fun, nonetheless, I still want to look at uh, what it would feel like if I would even notice a difference, which honestly I don't think I would. Do, I would. Um, but it's still interesting, nonetheless, to see the uh, Metal and OpenGL uh, score. So we are going to kick that off and see what happens. Now, what's really cool with the Mac is, you know, it's obviously one one cable here. Is as soon as we turn on the Razer Core, the MacBook's going to auto detect that, and it has. And then I can check within iStat menu to see that the 5700 is showing up as a 5700 XT. All right. So first up on the list is we are going to do a OpenCL. Um, benchmark on the 5700 XT, I guess in this case, and let that rip. All right, very cool. So we got a score of 39,745, uh, which is pretty nifty. And we are able to um, see in here that it is an open CL uh, on the 5700 XT. Very cool. Okay, and so for my next trick, we are gonna do a middle benchmark also on the 5700 and see what we get. All right, very cool. So for our middle score, we got 41,485, which is pretty cool. And again, we can see that the device is now named 5700 XT. And finally, for anyone who's still around or skipped ahead to this point, here are all the different benchmarks and a nice pretty graph for your viewing pleasure.
All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video. And the coolest part about it is the 5700 XT BIOS will stay with the 5700, thus giving us a performance gain, even though it will be very marginal. Uh, but, you know, as that 5700 migrates from system to system, whether it be the gaming computer, uh, her laptop, or even my laptop, it still always has that performance with zero tweaking required of voltages, uh, overclocking, any, anything of that nature. Um, so, things to come in the future, so we still have to do the troubleshooting video with uh, Streamlabs and 10 gig networking. And I think one of my viewers already called it um, about jumbo frame packages. So thanks for dropping a comment on that. And also we have a new Unraid build coming in the future, but it's gonna be a while before we switch over to Ryzen uh, for that build because no monies. I have no monies. Um, so uh, that's one, one thing to look forward to. And uh, time is coming up in about three or four weeks, three weeks, I am moving again for hopefully one of the last times in a very, very, very long while. Um, so all of the lab has to get broken down again for like the eighth time. And uh, we will get set up in a uh, hopefully more established place. So anyway, I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.